Hi, this is Ruth Payne uh, with the second in my series, uh, How to Photograph Your Art for SCA. Um, the first part of the series was making the light box. Now I'm going to teach you how to use the light box. I know it may be pretty easy to think about how to use it, but there's actually some tip, uh, tips and tricks that I can show you right now. So we have the light box already set up and built. Go ahead and keep talking. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll work around you. Don't worry about it. Um, so I already have the lights going. You can move the lights around however you want, which is really nice. You can change the coloring, what you want. Um, so what I'm going to do here is you can also change this background. If this is just poster board, um, cheap Dollar Tree poster board. You can use any color you want. You can use red, brown, black, um, anything. I find if I'm going to do a lot of pieces, though, that I prefer the white because I can change that in post. Um, but as you see there, that gives you this really gorgeous um, uh, museum quality type of lighting. If you don't want it as bright as you think you want it, um, you can always brighten it later. Or you can use heavier duty lights to really just go wah and get rid of every single shadow ever. But a lot of times you do want a couple of shadows because that kind of shows you the size of it. So we have that. Now you see that's nice and flat. And then we have this, again, beautiful little piece. It's nice and flat. Uh, here's a gorgeous uh, necklace that Francisco de Mansala made. Beautiful. You can do it nice and flat. Uh, here's a nice little piece. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, one of the things I have found, however, is if you get a piece of velvet, or velveteen in this case, it can really make some of your objects pop. You can just kind of put that in there, and now you put that on there, and you can kind of, I don't know if you can see that really well. You actually got a pretty good angle on that camera. Get it closer because you're going to get really up close and you're actually going to cut those edges off in the picture. So if we bring this camera around. Yeah, you can bring that camera around and see it. One of the things you're going to make sure is you've, you've taped it and made sure you've gotten all the stuff off of it. So if you get really, 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 really close. Then you can get a nice, yeah, a nice picture. Kind of the idea there. Without a zoom anyway. Right. And then you get those gorgeous lights. Now, you don't necessarily want to do that with this little tiny, beautiful sight token. I mean, you can. It's wonderful. But one of the ways to make it pop or to lay it in is grab yourself a Ziploc of rice. So with cleaning the uh, fabric, would something like a lint roller work, or does that leave behind a residue? Lint rollers are fine. Scotch tape is fine. It depends if it's like real velvet or velveteen. I prefer velveteen versus velvet just because you can iron it. You can lay it flat. You can use a lint roller, and you're not going to worry about it. I got this piece of velveteen. This is green velveteen that I got from um, a Goodwill store a number of years ago for like 25 cents. And then so, now that I've put that on there, I can just, huh, and you see it just lays in, and that gives you that little beautiful cushion that you would see like in a magazine. Okay. And then so we'll, and then you can always lay a couple of objects. So here, like something for like this ring, this is a gorgeous ring that the, uh, uh, former Prince of the Mists had made for his artisans, and it wouldn't stand up on its own like this, but because I can put it in the rice and smush it. Let's see if I'm just going to cut off camera one there for a minute to get the better angle on that. There we go. Haha, -ha, now I got it to focus. Awesome. So <laughs> that's, that's the way to do that. And that's one of the best tricks. You can also add... Um, Let's see where I had. 
grab little boxes or that's why that's so light up here. I'm gonna grab a little box. I'm gonna put it on here. So just grabbing the smallish box I have, put the wax out, put the box in, put the thing down. Because what I want is a drapey effect. We have this gorgeous necklace that Francisco made, and we're gonna make it drapey. So we get the highlights up here and then the low lights down there. And uh, the reason why I'm not using a neck form is ne neck forms are beautiful, but sometimes they can actually detract from a necklace. Um, having it displayed like this is something you would see in a magazine and higher end you know, art. It, it's actually even an interesting thought for doing in-person displays. Yes. To, to add some add some height and add some shape to art that otherwise looks flat on a table. Yes. Yeah, never have your necklaces just flat on a table. Always add something to give them some sort of depth. And people want to imagine that on their neck, flowing down. So one of the other things we can do is we want to add a little bit more bouncy light to this. So I'm taking this other little piece of uh, leftover, little leftover bit here. This is what's known as bouncing light. So we even have more light directed down on that. It's amazing how much of a difference that made. Right, it's just yeah. a really simple, little simple thing. Um, see if I can switch this. Uh, adding a red light to one side, seeing how this, and this is a lot of experimentation of, oh, well, what will this do? How will that affect just a little bit of light? Now, it, you don't really quite notice it that much, but it makes the green pop in a way that you might not necessarily have seen. Another one. Yeah. The lights. There we go. So we have red there. And you see how that changes the light on that. Um, oh, yeah. Let's put a different object in there. Let's go yeah, there. that really changed the color on it. That. Since this has a lovely red interior. It glows. <laughs> And then that also brings out all the reds that are in that um, object. And you can do that with a lot of different colors without having to change out your screen. And um, this was just a really simple, lovely light that I got at the Dollar Tree or Walmart for like a buck. And it comes in both red and green. And those are the two lights, colors that you're using most frequently. Um, one of the other things you can do is grab a marker if you really just don't have a colored one and color the inside of your light. Or you can use a, um, a film gel. You can make a, a film gel and you can get those actually from Walmart. The um, just clear colored plastic of any type. <laughs> Suddenly we're impeded on our traffic. There we go. So you see the difference now between the red and the white on that. It just it just changes everything. <laughs> so then we have like the ring. Normal. A lot of times it's also good, like you take one picture of something by it itself, and then you come over and start adding pieces. And then that way it can kind of showcase several objects you made together. And that really just 
makes things pop a little. And that's pretty much um, how to use the light box. Um, you'll just, you want to just move your camera back and forth, use your phone back and forth and try to get those. And we'll get into actually using your camera or using your uh, phone in the next class. So please end recording.